Hello everyone, my name is Romar A. De La Cruz. The topic that I'm going to discuss is Philippine literature during American period. Let's go first the historical background of the American period. The Filipino revolutionaries won against the Spaniards and the Philippine independence was proclaimed on June 12, 1898. The Filipinos won against the Spaniards after 300 years. The Philippine flag was raised on June 12, 1898 as a symbol of independence. The Philippines lost in the Philippines. American war with the surrender of General Miguel Malvar of Batangas and General Simeon Ola of Bicol. American period, they wrote all forms of literature like news, poetry, stories, play essays, novels, which clearly depicted their love of country and longing for independence. So American period, their writing was clearly depicted their love for country and their longings for independence. So let's talk about period of reorientation. This happened in 1898 till 1910. During this time, it was mostly covered by the American period and the landing of the Americans to the Philippines. On August 13, 1898, the American soldiers came to supposedly uh, liberate the Filipinos from the clutches of the Spanish conquerors, which actually never happened. So during the war, uh, the Americans established public school systems. And because of that, education became a very important issue since uh, it allowed the Americans to spread their cultural values, particularly the English language to the Filipinos. English was thought as a subject as the Spanish system was um, allowed to continue and English became the medium to all Filipino schools. Meanwhile, the Filipino teachers were trained in uh, the Philippine Normal School to take charge of elementary education. So newspapers at that time were published solely to continue the, the fight for freedom after the defeat of the Filipinos against the Americans. Mostly newspapers were banned before because they challenge the American government. So I gave three examples. Number one is El Nuevo Dia, or also known as the New Day. This was established by Sergio Osmeña in 19, uh, 1900s. And it was largely known for its political reporting. And because of that, the Americans censored and banned this new newspaper and threatened Osmena with banishment. Next example we have is El Grito del Pueblo, which is also known as the Call of the Nation. This was uh, also banned because of its political uh, statements about the American uh, colonial regime. Next we have is El Renacimiento, or also known as the Rebirth. So this was founded by uh, Rafael Palma. And yeah, okay, so this newspaper was a response to the signing of the Treaty of Paris. It was highly critical of the United States colonial regime and its policies. Because of that, the paper was shut down due to the official pressure after publishing an editorial that dealt with the corruption in the colonial government of the Americans. Now let's take a look at Filipino English writers at this period. So I gave two examples, which is Justo Juliano, and he wrote Sur Sum Corda. This is a, a poem. This is the first poem, English poem, that was written by a Filipino. It is about the struggles that Filipinos face with uh, the Spaniards and the Americans, and how Filipinos proudly carry their flags, but also they give up so quickly. Next writer we have is Juan F. Salazar. He wrote My Mother and also Air Castle. So let's focus on Air Castle. Air Castle is also a poem. 
this poem is about reflection, reflection of yourself. So it connects to the reality of life. And the poem wants to make people realize that ambition is not really easy to achieve because you can always experience rejection. And yeah, rejection can be hard at times. But also in this poem, it tackles about how rejection should not be the reason why people should quit their ambitions. So those were the examples of Filipino writers, newspapers, and the characteristics of what happened during the period of reorientation. Hello everyone, my name is Romer A. De La Cruz. The topic that I'm going to discuss is Philippine literature during American period. Let's go first, the historical background of the American period. The Filipino revolutionaries won against the Spaniards and the Philippine independence was proclaimed on June 12, 1898. The Filipinos won against the Spaniard after 300 years. The Philippine flag was raised on June 12, 1898 as a symbol of independence. The flag was hoisted by General Emilio Aguinaldo and the Philippine Republic was inaugurated but was short-lived. American period, they wrote all forms of literature like news, poetry, stories, play essays, novels, which clearly depicted their love of country and longing for independence. Their writings of American period was clearly depicted their love for country and their longings for independence. Next is newspaper circulated during American period. These newspapers were published during the American period and were primarily established to continue the fight for freedom after the defeat of the Filipino forces against the American. These are El Nuevo Dia or the New Day. El Nuevo Dia was founded by Sergio Smeña in 1900s and it is a Cebuano newspaper. Next is El Grito del Pueblo or the Call of the Nation. El Grito del Pueblo was founded by Pascual Poblete and it is a pro-labor and radical nationalist newspaper which advocates independence under the protection of the United States. Last is El Renacimiento, the rebirth. El Renacimiento founded by Rafael Palma. El Renacimiento is a bilingual Spanish Tagalog language newspaper. As an organ of the Nationalist Party, El Renacimiento came to exert real power in Manila that influenced the government. Next is place stage during the American period. In American period, there were also plays written then, but after the first and second presentations, the American put a stop to this because of the consistent theme of nationalism. Included here were the following. Kahapon ngayon bukas, or in English, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Kahapon ngayon bukas, it shows disapproval of the expansion of power led by a country within and focus on the success of Inang Bayan against those who belittle him. Next is Tanikalang Ginto. The Tanikalang Ginto was written by Juan Abad. The story is about freedom and love. The story has a hidden message. Tanikalang Ginto, every character and every happening in the story symbolize something. It tells us what is really happening during those times that Americans have colonized our country. The third one is Malaya. Malaya is the earliest of the drama symbolic plays written in prose and verse, which shows to be anti-Spanish and other records report it to be anti-American. Malaya was written Thomas Remejillo. Thomas Remejillo is best known for creating the first Katipunan branch, the Balangay Trozo in Tondo, which inspired others to create branches around the Philippines. After the was Remejillo wrote Malaya, 
it is considered of the finest nationalist place written during the American colonial times. This earliest drama symbolico in Tagalog is a polit political allegory hidden in the love of the heroine. The last one is Walang Sugat. Walang Sugat was written by Severino Reyes. Walang Sugat was written when the Cerzuela became a potent means of expressing Filipino nationalism during the American occupation of the Philippines that followed three centuries of Spanish rule. That's all. Thank, thank you. Literature during the Spanish period. Spanish colonization of the Philippines started in the year 1565 during the time of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. He is the first Spanish governor general in the Philippines. Literature started to flourish during his time. The spurt continued unabated until the Cavite Revolt in 1872. Next will be the Spanish influences on the Philippine literature. One is Alibata, two, Christian doctrine, three, Spanish language became the literary language in his time, four, European legends and traditions, five, ancient literature was collected and translated to Tagalog, six, grammar books were printed in Filipino, seven, religious tone. This is the Alibata. Next will be the first books. One, Doctrina Cristiana, the Christian doctrine. Two, Nuestra Señora del Rosario. Three, Libro de los Cuatro Post Primeras de Hombre. Four, Ang Barlan at Josefat. Five, the Passion, 6. Urbana at Felisa, 7. Ang Mga Dalit kay Maria, Psalms for Mary. Next will be the li literary compositions. 1. Arte y Reglas de la Lengua Tagala, Art and Rules of the Tagalog Language. 2. Compendio de la Lengua Tagala, Understanding the Tagalog Language. 3. Vocabulario de la Lengua Tagala, Tagalog Vocabulary. 4. Vocabulario de la Lengua Pampanga, Pampanga Vocabulary. 5. Vocabulario de la Lengua Bisaya, Bisayan Vocabulary. 6. Arte de la Lengua Ilocana, The Art of Ilocano Language. 7. Arte de la Lengua Bicolana, the art of Bicol language. Next will be the folk songs. Leron Leron Sinta, Tagalog. Pamulinawen, Iloko. Dandansoy, Bisaya. Sarong Bangi, Bicol. Atin Kupung Sing Sing, Kapampangan. Next will be the recreational plays. There were many recreational plays performed by Filipinos during the Spanish times. Almost all of them were in poetic form. <clears throat> First will be the Cenaculo. This one is a dramatic performance of the Passion and Death of Christ. Next, Zarzuela. The father of drama, a musical comedy or melodrama, Three acts which death with men's passion and emotions like love, fate, revenge, cruelty, avarice, or some political problem. Next, Lagaylay. A special occasion for the Pilarenos of Sorsogon during May time to get together. Tibag. 
dramatic performance for the purpose of manifesting devotion for the Holy Cross. Panuluyan Philippine Christmas Dramatic Ritual narrating the whole family search for a place to stay in Bethlehem for Jesus Christ's birth through songs. Salubong Dramatizes the reunion of the risen Christ and his mother. Carillo A form of dramatic entertainment performed on a moonless night during a town fiesta or on dark nights after a harvest. Sainete a short musical comedy popular during the 18th century, they were exaggerated comedy shown between acts plays and were mostly performed by characters from the lower class. Next, the Moro Moro. Like the Senaculo, the Moro Moro is presented also on a special stage. This is performed during town fiestas to entertain the people and to remind them of their Christian religion. Karagatan This is a poetic vehicle of a social religious nature celebrated during the death of a person. Duplo The duplo replaced the karagatan. This is a poetic juiced in speaking and reasoning. The Balagtasan. This is a poetic or a contest of skills in debate on a particular topic or issue. The Dung Ao. This is a chant in free verse by a bereaved person or his representative beside the corpse of the dead. Awit. Awit is in Do de Casilabic verse. These are fabricated stories from writers' imagination, although the setting and characters are European. Awit usually refers to chanting. Example is Florante at Laura by Francisco Balagtas. Next will be the Corrido. This one is in octosyllabic verse. It is usually on the legends or stories from the European countries like France, Spain, Italy, and Greece. This one refers to narration. Example is Ibong Adarna by Jose de la Cruz. So good day everyone, I am Janeline C. Sebio and I will be discussing about the Philippine literature in Filipino or Tagalog language. So let's begin by defining the period in the Philippine literature. So it says here that it is a literature associated with the Philippines through prehistory, through its colonial legacies and on to the present. So here are the various Filipino writers and interpreters who define liter literature in their views as citizens of the Philippines. This included Jose Arrogante, Zeus Salazar, and Patrocinio V. Villaferte, among others. So, Salazar described literature as a force that motivated society. So, it was a powerful tool that could free one of the Russian ideas to to escape and it is also a unique human experience to mankind and for Arrogante it is a literature is a book of life in which a person reveals things related to his inexplicable color of life and life in his world so it makes a person through creative methods and let's start with the characteristics of Philippine literature. So it says here that an exposition of the literature of social truths and fictional imaginations. And it cares the senses of man, the viewer, the hearing, the sensation, the taste, and the senses. So in 2000, Villafuerte attributed this to a life but a simple word flowing into the human body. So he said that the literature has its own existence because it has its own throbbing and hot blood flowing into the artist. And also, when literature is read, 
it is a source of emotion to a person who of or group of people because they are written by fellow humans so currently the method of spreading and distributing literature in the philippines is very easy this is because the modern technological developments beside the written word of in books radio and television also spread the literature so this is an instrument for filipino readers with an appreciation and pride in their origin history culture and tradition and that will spread to the literature in the philippines so by nag at sikat or in english from early dawn to full light was considered as the first socialist oriented book in the philippines so why because this book in the Philippines, which expounded principles of socialism and seek labor reforms from the government, and the book was later made an inspiration for the assembly of the 1932 Socialist Party of the Philippines. So I will be giving um, a brief summary about Banaag at Sikat. We have here the character the Delif Liffin and Philippi. So Delifin is a socialist, he is poor, he writes for a newspaper and studies law, while Philippe is an anarchist who wants to do away with the rich landowners. He himself comes from a rich family, but he hates his father who is leader in their town of Sulangan. So Philippe decides to leave his luxurious home and goes to live with Don Ramon, which is his nino or godfather in Manila, whom he also learns to hate for being rich. Filipini falls in love with a commoner named Tantai but is forced to return home by his father. So this book, so as a book, wait, so as a book that was considered as the Bible of working class Filipinos. The pages of the novel revolves around the life of Delphine, his love for a daughter of a rich landlord, while Lope K. Santos also discusses the social issues such as socialism, capitalism, and the works of the United Associations of Laborers. Next is Corazon de Jesus. So, Jose Corazon de Jesus is a noted Filipino poet who used Tagalog poetry to express the Filipinos' desire for independence during the American occupation. And he was also known as Huseng Batute. And Dib as Makata ng Pag-ibig. He was also the one who wrote the nationalistic poem Bayan Ko and Isang Punong Kahoy. So, let's discuss Bayanko, which is the nationalistic poem, or in English, My Dear Country. So, Bayanko is one of the most recognizable patriotic songs in the Philippines that, because of its popularity, is sometimes assured to be a folk song and the country's unofficial national anthem. So, it was originally written as a poem by Jose Corazon de Jesus in 1921, 1929 and set to music by Constancio de Guzman. So, written, it was written as a protest song during the American occupation of the Philippines, and it is often sung in the protest rallies and demonstration throughout the Philippine history. So the poem is one of the most recognizable patriotic songs of the Philippines, and it is the second and official national anthem of the philippines and it focuses also on how the philippines was taken over because of its beauty and splendor and how it will soon gain back its freedom for the people and the country so moving on with amado v hernandez which is a poet a playwright and novelist he was also crowned as the Makata ng mga manggagawa because his poem revolves on the lives of city laborers. 
So Amado V. Hernandez was also dubbed as Makata ng Mangagawa or a poet of the river in the literature because he pictures his poem in sense love for the poor worker of labor. And to him, a poem is a scent, bitter sweet memories, and a murmur of flowing water. So the pen is powerful and according to him, even a king can be bent by the pen. That was a wonderful scene. So, he also contributed a lot of writings to literature like Isang Dipang Langit, Bayang Malaya, Ang Panday, and Muntin Lupa. But his masterpiece is Ang Panday. So, Ang Panday, whose real name is Flavio, is a fictional Philippine comics character. And his adventures were serialized in the series Ang Panday in Filipino. And the character took his place in Philippine pop culture when the comics were adapted to film. So the film spawned three direct sequels as well as other mostly connected films. And second to the last would be Valeriano Hernandez Peña. So he was popularly known as Tandang Anong and he was the father of the Tagalog noble. And his pen name was called as Kutil Putil. And the novel Nena at Neneng was his masterpiece. So Nena at Neneng is a novel created by the author as he wanted to show Filipinas great lessons such as proper manners should be realized and conducted. So one of the oldest, longest, and epic novel that was written, which is the Nena and at Neneng. And one of a kind story that everyone should know and share. So we have here the last popular writers, which is Inigo Ed Regalado. So he was a popular storyteller, novelist, and newspaper during the Amerian period. So he was the one of the powerful voices he was one of the powerful voices in the newspaper and magazines during the first part of the 90s among his awarded works were the 1964 poem tilam sik or in english the literary splash of water or spark of fire and the 1941 Compilation entitled Damdami in English, Feelings or Emotion. So Damdami won the first prize during the first poetry competition during the time of the Commonwealth of the Philippines in 1941. And he wrote more than 26 novels. And his works belong in the golden age of the Tagalog novel which is to show the beauty and depth of Tagalog, the metaphorical sharpness of the indigenous, and the strength derived from the core of a nation that values freedom, justice, brotherhood, and development. So those are the five popular writers in the Philippine literature. So I have put there the link of their masterpiece. If you want to read, just click here, click it, and read. So thank you for watching and God bless. Okay, so hello. For today, I am your speaker, Jari Jonah V. Garcia from Bised 2A. So I'm going to discuss my topic about Filipino-Tagalog poetry. So Filipino writers use Tagalog primarily to capture nationalist realities. So Filipino writers way back 1940s or 1950s uses Tagalog primarily to capture the nationalist realities. And they assured that when they're going to do their poem, they're assured that it is related to realities. And poetry in Tagalog 
tends to be more homologous. Homologous, which means having the same relation to Philippine society. Because it says here, it is a Filipino Tagalog poetry, so it means homologous to Philippine society. So, in broad terms, or in other words, it may be said that English is used primarily to enhance form, and Tagalog is to enhance the content. So, these are the characteristic, characteristics of Tagalog poetry. So, Tagalog poetry made its first appearance not as independent reading matter, but as a handmade to the religious publications. So, as I have said a while ago, it is from 1940s or 1950s, or it is belong to Tagalog poetry during the 17th century. So, it is handmade and it, it is related to religious publications. And other characteristic here is the meagerness, or in other words, lack of quantity or quality of the poetic output of these years may be explained primarily as the effect of high cost of printing. So here are the well-known poets and their famous works. First is Jose Corazon de Jesus. He wrote Tagalog poetry during the American occupation of Philippines during 1901 to 1946. So his famous works is the poem entitled Bayan Ko, or in other words, My Country, 1929. So Bayan Ko was composed in 1928 when Filipinos were campaigning for independence from America under the leadership of President Manuel Quezon. So, or in other words, Bayan Ko reminisced the song are the yearnings of the people colonized over 400 years, first as a colony of Spain and then as a colony of United States. So next, so here is the poem titled Bayan Ko. Bayan Ko ang Pilipinas, lupain ng ginto at bulaklak. Pag-ibig na sa kanyang palad, nag-alay ng ganda at dilag. At sa kanyang lumi at ganda, dayuhan ay nahalina. Bayan ko, binihag ka, nasadlak sa drusa. Ibon mang may malayang lumipad, kulungin mo at umiyak. Bayan pa kayang sakdal dilag, ang di magnasang makaalpas. Pilipinas kong minumutya, pugad ng luha kot dalita. Aking adhika, makita ang sakdal laya. So the next poet, or the next famous poet is Alejandro G. Abadilla. He is a Filipino poet, essayist, and fiction writer. And he also armed with no criticism and an orientation on modernist poetry would taunt traditional Tagalog poetics with the publication of his poem entitled Ako Ang Daigdig. So Ako Ang Daigdig, it was different in so many ways, was a real strong and proud proclamation of one's uniqueness. So before I forgot, Alejandro G. Abadilla is the father of modernist poetry. So this Ako Ang Daigdig belong to the era of modernism in Tagalog poetry. So according to Alejandro G. Abadilla, he has the right to create poetry in the way he does. So next. So here is the poem, Ako Ang Daigdig. Ako Ang Daigdig, Ako Ang Tula. Ako Ang Daigdig, Ang Tula. Ako Ang Daigdig ng Tula, Ang Tula ng Daigdig. Ako Ang Walang Maliw na Ako, Ang Walang Kamatayang Ako, Ang Tula ng Daigdig. Ako Ang Daigdig ng Tula, Ako Ang Daigdig ng Tula. Ako Ang Malayang Ako, Matapat sa Sarili, Sa Aking Daigdig ng Tula. Ako Ang Tula sa Daigdig, Ako Ang Daigdig ng Tula. Ako. So next is Rolando Tino. Rolando Santos Tino is famous for being a playwright, poet, and translator. He wrote the poem titled Sit Sit Sa Kulig or Whistling at Kikadas, 1972. Sit Sit Sa Kuliglis, Kuliglig is Tino's first book poems in Filipino after the publication of his English poems. 
Sitsit sa Kuliglig is one of the important contributions to Filipino poetry lie in its modernist and creative presentation of themes and subjects, which was achieved through the aesthetics of Bagay poets. Or in other words, it broke away from the rigid and conventional writing style of traditional literature. It is one of the works that made writing poetry in Filipino modern, acute, and sophisticated. So that's the end of my discussion. Again, I am Jari Jona Garcia. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening. Hi everyone, I am Gutierrez Erika Joy, your speaker for today, and for today I will be discussing about short stories and drama. Let me screen share for you. Okay. Hi. Filipino or Tagalog short story and Filipino or Tagalog drama. Short story is also known as Maikling Kwento or Dagli. It is called Maikling Kwento because you can read stories in just one sitting. Liwayway, popular weekly publication of short stories, and the authors before are Diogracias Rosario, Teodoro Hener, and Sirio H. Pangalib. Popular short story writers include Lope, K. Santos, Patricio Mariano, Rosario Almario. Popular short story writers, the first picture is Lope K. Santos. Lope K. Santos is novelist, poet, and author, and grammarian. Covered three periods of Tagalog literature, American, Japanese, and contemporary period. Manuel L. Quezon is called the father of the national language. Lope K. Santos is called the father of the national language grammar, also called the Apo of, in, of the Tagalog writers. Banaag and Sikat was his masterpiece, and we will tackle that later. Trivia about Lope K. Santos. His full name is commonly pronounced as Lope K. Santos. Next one, Patricio G. Mariano, a playwright, poet, journalist, violinist, and painter, Patricio Mariano E. Jeronimo was born on March 17, 1877 in Santa Cruz, Manila. He joined fellow Filipinos in the outbreak of the revolution in 1896. In 1898, he served as right-hand man of Ambrosio Lienzares Bautista, President Aguinaldo's advisor. When the Philippine-American War was over, Mariano went back to Manila to continue with his passion in writing. Next picture, Rosauro Almario. Rosauro C. Almario is a prominent Filipino writer in the Tagalog language. He was a respected journalist, editor, nationalist, politician, newspaper manager, and a proponent of anti-graft practices. Almario's works revealed in his inclination to nationalism, rev revolutionary ideas, tradition, and customs. Oh, let me go back. We have Banaag at Sikat by Lope K. Santos. So let me tell you the story of Banaag at Sikat. Banaag and Sikat was all about Felipe and Delphine with their advocacy that everyone must be equal. Felipe, the son of Don Ramon, a greedy person hates his father because his father is greedy and oppressive. He left the house and worked in publishing house. He courted Tentai. His father 
force him to go home. And Felipe had no choice, and so he followed it. Felipe, on the other hand, tell the workers their right. And his father, Don Ramon, got angry and tell him to leave the house. Felipe left the house and work again in the publishing house. Don Ramon has two daughters, Manny and Talia, and one son, Felipe. Manny is single and Talia is already married to Madlang Lion. We also have Delphine. Delphine is poor, grew on his auntie, and fell in love with the daughter of Don Ramon, Manny. Manny and Delphine, Delphine have a baby, but Don Ramon did not want it. But he has no choice but to let them get married. But Don Ramon let them, what we call that, let them sign a a New Testament that Mendy will not have any heritage at all. Due to anger, Don Ramon go to Japan, US, and Europe with his workers. I mean, worker, only one worker. Mendy and Delphine is suffering. Mendy's clothes were sold, and on his first birthday, Mandy sold the necklace to have a fancy celebration. Delphine do not want a fancy celebration. So, but he did not oppose it at all. He just let Mandy, I'm, yeah, many with that. But the celebration was stopped by a sudden news that Don Ramon is killed by his worker. He was killed by his worker because of greediness. And the body of Don Ramon was uh, bring back to Philippines. They were at the funeral, the workers, the family members were at the funeral and Felipe and Delphine were there at night and they were having a conversation about the revolution. They want a revolution, but it will take long time. And some want a bloody revolution. And they agreed that they would go home already because it's already night. So that's the story of Benag and Sikat by Lope K. Santos. Next one, drama, a powerful vehicles for propagation of Filipino values for the audience. We have popular dramatist Severino Reyes, Aurelio Tolentino, Hermo Genes Ilagan, Patricio Mariano, and Julian Cruz Balmaceda. We will tackle also Walang Sugat Drama by Severino Reyes. This is the link for Walang Sugat if you want to check on it. This is also the link for Banaag and Sikat. So let's, let's go to Walang Sugat Drama by Severino Reyes. Regarded as Severino Reyes' masterpiece, Walang Sugat broadly underscores the injustice in Spanish rule even as it dances around the cruel fate of young lovers, Tenyong and Julia, with humor and song. Set in the final leg of the Philippines Revolution, Tenyong is forced to leave behind the childhood sweetheart Julia to join Katipunan. So, iniwan niya si Julia. Meanwhile, Julia's mother pressures her into marrying a, the wealthy Miguel instead. 
with no word from Tenyong as the battle prolongs, Julia gave in, but her wedding was interrupted by the fatally wounded Tenyong, who returns with a dying wish. So that's the very short walang sugat drama. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy.